so uh, relieving win for your boys in the end. Uh, overall, what were your thoughts of the entire game? Yeah, I thought fantastic. Uh, the first five minutes, obviously, or the first quarter, they, they got away from us, but we, we um, fought back in the second part of that first quarter, and I think it was seven scoring shots to eight. Um, and then the next three quarters was a fantastic effort, it's a fantastic effort by our group. Yep. Uh, had Timmy Auckland back today into the side after a few weeks in Adelaide and stuff like that. Uh, how did you feel he went today, and what does he bring back to the group after an experience like that? Yeah, uh, Timmy's fantastic. Uh, Timmy's one of our junior players that's gone through the State Academy program, and uh, he had an opportunity in the Sant from the last three weeks, which was uh, a credit to Tim and the work rate he's done, and also a credit to the football club to be able to... Um, uh, you know, work with an AFL club, uh, AFL club on that type of agreement uh, for three or four weeks. I don't think it's been done in Tassie before, and, and Timmy got that opportunity and Launceston um, assisted in that process. So uh, he was fantastic today. I, I think he clearly won the hitouts and, and gave our mids a really good look at the footy and um, took some really good marks and, and, and gave us a big man presence in that ruckman and allowed us to play Hamish Leadham in a slightly different role today. Yep. Um, similar to Timmy, younger <laughs> boys in uh, Mundy, Jackson, House, and Jones all played their roles and played pre-order day. Uh, what do they bring to the group and how did you feel they went as well? Yeah, I thought uh, all, all four of them are stud under 18 players. Um, all four of them are fantastic individuals. Uh, they all have a mindset of wanting to play at the highest level and committing um, you know, to, to the highest program possible. And, and today we've seen a performance from all four of them. Um, future talented Tasmanian players uh, play really well, and obviously Chase, uh, you know Chase is Chase Jones is Chase Jones. He's we get him for another eight to nine weeks, and then uh, you know he'll probably take two weeks off training, get stuck back into it, and we'll, we'll see him over in the mainland playing in uh, in the big league. I would have thought. So. Yep. Uh, Jake Hines was more up forward this week. Uh, how did you feel that went, and uh, he presented himself today? Yeah, I thought really good, to be honest. Um, Jake was being tagged in the first component of the game. Um, they, they had sent a player to him from the start, so uh, we believe Jake could isolate um, that particular player in the forward line. And um, about 10 minutes after the move, uh, move, Jake kicks a goal on the goal line, takes a mark and, and snaps one on his left foot and puts it through. So uh, I thought he was good. He, it was a different role for him, that you're right. Um, I thought he embraced it really well and, and, in, and you know, individually he held pretty well with it. Uh, obviously today was Jake Smith's 100 game, uh, played a pretty good game from what I saw. Uh, how did you feel as well and uh, how did the boys get around that? Yeah, um, you know, Jake, we spoke on Thursday night and, and I asked him to, to talk about um, what football and what this means to him and the first thing Jake said was he thanked his mum Brenda and, and um, what she's done for the footy club to allow Jake to, to play. Um, consistent footy and what we've seen this year is a really strong performance and he's got the support around him now from family, from fa friends, the, the playing group um, and we're seeing him ex excel through the midfield. Yep and uh, lastly any injury concerns or just sore bodies and uh, anyone to come back in through injuries or whatnot? Yeah at uh, this stage no injuries, um, uh, you know you touch wood hopefully Monday night I'm sure there's a few sore boys as, as playing at that sort of that high intensity level always creates um, a general soreness but uh, at this stage no injuries and, and um, our D-League played really well today so there'll, there'll continue to be pressure from below to, to hold spots and uh, our group's really adapting and, and understanding that and now working through it to, to fight for those senior selection games which is a good culture to have at a footy club. Um, obviously a tough loss for the boys in the end today, uh, what were your overall thoughts on the way today played out? Uh, look we were really happy with the start, that was probably one of the main focuses we had uh, we haven't travelled well on the bus up here this year, so we put a major focus on a really good start and, and we certainly achieved that. But uh, once we got five goals up, we sort of put the cue in the rack and thought the job was done and, and you can't afford to do that against a side like Launceston who you know we think are probably the best team in the competition at the moment. And uh, they fought back really hard. Yep. Uh, obviously, you mentioned a pretty good start. Uh, Tim Mosquito was really good early. Uh, how did you feel... He went throughout the whole game. What does he bring to a side like yours in the form that he's in at the moment? Yeah, look, Timmy. Timmy had a was probably his best game for the year. Although you know he's a little bit down on himself at the moment with the, with the loss. I think he finished with uh, 25 possessions and um, one goal, three. So he could have probably kicked a little bit more accurately, but he certainly creates uh, a lot of scoring opportunities inside 50s. And he's hard to tackle because he's so agile. And um, look, the boys love him. They love him and Henry being down here. And uh, you know it was. Uh, it's probably tough for them this time of the year with the, with the cold weather, but you know they're embracing it and they love the club and we love them as well. Yep. Uh, start of the last quarter, you came out real quick and got a few on the board early. Uh, what was the three-quarter time message to the boys to kind of get them up and about at that stage? Yeah, look, we, we actually we were probably five or six goals down there at the last uh, seven or eight minutes of the third quarter and we actually thought we'd got back on top of Launceston. And they, they'd pretty much run really hard that quarter and they seemed to just hit a, hit a bit of a barrier and... 
we had a couple of repeat inside 50s and uh, we, we, we had shots on goal, but we weren't kicking the goals. And we thought if we could have pinched two or three there at the end, we, we got one. But uh, if we thought we could have got two or three, it was in a three goal game there going into three quarter time and give ourselves a real good chance. But we just didn't capitalise on their, their chances and they, our, sorry, our chances, and they defended really well as well in that, that period. Yep. Uh, so, look, to answer your question, in, as far as revving them up, we were only five goals down, so we were still in the game. It was really important to kick the first goal, which we did in the, in the last quarter, but then they responded straight away, and we went goal for goal there for a little bit, and you can't do that when you're behind. Yep. Uh, obviously, you've had Thor Boscott back for a few weeks now. Uh, what's it like having a player of his calibre back in the side and the influence he brings towards your group as well? Yeah, look, it's um, it's probably something we've repeated all year with uh, with the depth in, in, in our side that you, um, you have a lot of young kids, so when you lose a player like... Thor or Bryce or someone of that calibre, you, you can't replace them. It takes a long time because the guys in the Mercury Cup are still in that development stage and probably you know two or three years away from actually cracking into the seniors themselves. So you're bringing in players that just aren't ready for senior football and you know we've had to fill the hole and now we're starting to get those players back and Thor's one of our team leaders and probably our barometer on the field. So when Thor's going well, the side's generally going well. So it's good to have him back out there, although he was a little bit down today. Yep. And uh, just to end this off, mate, any injuries or bodies from today's game that you know of so far? Uh, no, I think we pretty much uh, came through unscathed, just a few broken hearts. It uh, won't, won't take long to mend. And the good thing about footy is you have a loss, review the game, get it, look forward to next week against Kingston, and that's, that's the way it goes at the moment.